from Jared Greenberg. If you take a close look at John Morant leaving the arena with a visible limp, did not take any questions from the media. So let's welcome in Jared Greenberg, who put this investigative tweet out last night. And also Smitty is on set now. John Morant, again, limping after Game 3, that recent recipient of the Most Improved Player Award. Also, like you said, Jared, did not speak to the media following that loss. So what do we know about the extent of Ja's injury as of now? Hey, Chris, unfortunately, that's really all we do know. Uh, Taylor Jenkins, after the game, did not give out much information. They said he's going to uh, undergo further evaluation. Uh, as of the latest injury report that's put out every hour on NBA.com, the Warriors and Grizzlies have not yet submitted their injury reports for Game 4. Uh, so we will wait. The Grizzlies will have uh, uh, a media availability later on today in about three or four hours from now. So we hope to learn more at that point. But really what, what took off last night, and again, We'll wait to see Jaws' status, but was the back and forth this drama that escalated? It, it started with Taylor Jenkins in his media availability after the game saying that he felt that, that Jordan Poole pulled and yanked uh, Ja Morant's uh, knee moments after, and I, I literally don't think it was 30 seconds after I took that video of Ja walking out the arena. He must have been sitting on the bus. He tweets out, uh, retweets the play in slow-mo and says, broke the code, clearly trolling Steve Kerr, who accused Dylan Brooks of breaking the code. Remember, he got ejected after a flagrant two in game number two and then got suspended for his play. The Grizzlies all then came to the defense of Ja Morant when they came to the podium. The Warriors, as you would expect, came to the uh, defense of Jordan Poole, their teammate, and, and you know, Steph Curry and, and, and Clay Thompson all said that there was nothing malicious about that play. Jordan Poole, in fact, said that he was just trying to make a play on the ball. But, but Smitty, you know, you were great at this in your playing days. It feels like right now the Warriors may be in the head of, of the Memphis Grizzlies, and there's a whole lot of gamesmanship here, Smitty, going back and forth from game one with Draymond to being ejected, game two, Dylan Brooks being ejected, and now this incident here in game three between uh, Jordan Poole and John Morant. You know, Jerry, uh, great point. I'm glad you brought that up. And, and obviously, when you have these type of series as far as talent and young versus old, that's where experience comes in. And even handling something like this adversity, you cannot let this be something that distracts you in your locker room from either side. Warriors has been there, and this is where the Memphis Grizzlies, you know, from the president, general manager, basketball operations, all these titles, coaches, you got to focus this back on basketball. We don't want any injuries at all, you know, from any of our players, whether they're star players or not. But I think when you start getting caught up in talking to the media, trying to win the media, that's when you're going to lose focus. And just watching that play, I don't know when John Morant got hurt, whether it was when he got grabbed, but I also saw early in that game he took a knee to Klay Thompson. Then there was a knee, even on that play with Jordan Poole, if you watch right here. Really doesn't matter. It does. I think right now both teams are trying to win the media. And I think if you're the Memphis Grizzlies, you got to come out and just play. You're playing up against an experienced team that have been through a lot of different situations. And this is where you're going to have to learn. And I also know back in my day, breaking the cold, Jared, the cold was if somebody knew you was injured at times, nothing, I would say, lower. But if it was fingers, shoulders, you know, even that jump ball, we had guys try to grab your fingers, try to hit your, your shoulders, try to hit you wherever they thought there was an injury uh, to try to win the game. Um, nothing malicious, I would say, as far as going after your knees, but I would say any, any other ankles and everything else, toes, they, you got stepped on. Yeah, you know, Smitty, when you mention all of those things and I think about how they played out throughout this series, and the fact is GP2 is out with his injury, right, for a month or so. Uh, they'd have to get to the finals for him to come back. And you think about Dylan Brooks missing time, being suspended. Jared, it seems as if a situation that's escalating, is there any point that the league would step in and maybe uh, try to handle this before it does escalate too far between these two teams? Yeah, I'm not really sure how much the league could do at this point. You know, I would imagine that the officiating would be pretty tight and, you know, we, we uh, will, for game four tomorrow night. But uh, Taylor Jenkins said that he would get together with his general manager and they would consider um, submitting the play to the league. But keep in mind, this is a very common practice. Teams submit plays 
almost after every single game to the league office. And I'm sure the league, uh, being that this is a high-profile playoff game, will take a look at it anyway. But but like Smitty said, you know, this particular play, it's very it's very different in slow mo than it is in real time. And you have to keep in mind how fast it happened and the fact that there was contact, incidental contact, with Jordan Poole's knee and Ja Morant's knee just a, a hair of a second before uh, Jordan Poole made any contact with his hand uh, and the knee. So, you know, I, 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 let me say this, too, just for some perspective, if people are going to get on this conspiracy theory wagon. In the NBA playoffs, for the first four games of every series, the officials are predetermined before every series. So whoever is on the officiating crew, when that is announced at 9 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning, that was determined before this series started. Now, for games five, six, and potentially seven, that's when the officials are determined as we go based on who has and who has not refereed this series. But but I would imagine there will be a tight leash uh, tomorrow night, uh, you know, just in terms of the intensity that has been displayed on this court uh, over the first three games of the season.